I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor moving forward. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my email list and let me tell you why. There's something called Section 230. Now, if you're paying attention to politics, I don't know, a year or two ago, a couple of years ago now, Donald Trump was president and had a problem with Section 230. He was dealing with, you know, alleged censorship from Twitter. And in retaliation, he wanted to remove Section 230 from law. So what is Section 230? Years ago, when the internet was young, back in the 90s, there were two companies, CompuServe and Prodigy, right? And they basically ran forums on their websites. Now, CompuServe did zero moderation on their forums. Prodigy tried to moderate their forums, right? There were some laws in place established back in the 70s that said, basically, if you are a distributor, like, say, a bookstore, you know, this bookstore didn't publish the books, they didn't curate the books, they didn't read through them or anything like that. They're just a, a storefront, basically, serving the, the books to other people. If you're a distributor, like a library or, or a bookstore, you cannot be sued for defamatory information that's found in the things that you sell. You have to go back to the person who said the defamatory thing to sue them rather than the distributor. Now, if you're a publisher, that's a little bit different. A publisher would be somebody like a newspaper because they curate the things. They solicit the stuff that they print. It's not just uh, an open field like a, a Wild West where anybody can put anything in a newspaper. They actually go through it and curate it. So there were protections put in place for distributors. Like AT&T, as a phone company, couldn't be sued for facilitating somebody leaving a defamatory voicemail on somebody else's phone, even though you know the thing traveled through their lines to that person's phone. They're just a distributor. They're not actually producing the thing. So there was a protection put in place for that. Now, CompuServe and Prodigy in the 1990s, zip forward a, a few decades. CompuServe had a forum. Prodigy had a forum. CompuServe did zero moderation on their forum. Prodigy tried to do good faith moderation. It was couched as a more family-friendly forum that people could go to in the early days of the internet. Well, distributors up to that point had a protection that basically said if you are unaware of illegal action or illegal things being said on your website. If you're unaware of libelous material or defamatory material or, or whatever, if you're unaware of it, then you can't be sued for it. Unfortunately, Prodigy did know about some of this libelous stuff because they were going through trying to moderate. And there was a lawsuit against CompuServe and against Prodigy because they distributed material from people who typed it out that was defamatory. They were sued. Prodigy lost their lawsuit, despite the fact that they were trying to moderate in good faith. CompuServe won. So after that, in the early days of the internet, the think of the children lawmakers, the ones that got parental advisory stickers placed on CDs, those types of people, you know, conservative, right-wing, fear-mongering types, decided, you know what? moderation is better than no moderation at all. So we're going to push through a law that protects companies. If they want to moderate their material, then they can't be sued for good faith moderation efforts. That was Section 230. Donald Trump wants to remove Section 230. Here's where the real issue becomes clear. What would removing Section 230 do? It would mean that companies are no longer protected if they decide to moderate their websites. If libelous material is put up on their website, Twitter can be sued for that now. Or Truth Social can be sued for it. Or YouTube. They can be sued out of existence for hosting it, even for a fraction of a second. So they have two options. Either heavily, heavily regulate what goes on their website, like only allow like 100 people to upload to their website or use them at all, people that they deeply trust, or 
engage in absolutely no moderation whatsoever, which means erase the existence of a recommendation algorithm. It means no more algorithms at all. You wouldn't have an up next on YouTube. You wouldn't have a for you page on Twitter. You wouldn't have a for you page on TikTok. Honestly, you wouldn't have a TikTok. You wouldn't have a YouTube shorts anymore. It would destroy the internet as we know it. It would completely erase what we have right now. And it would be more like having a Dropbox or like a Google Drive. You know, YouTube has a single URL that people can go to, your URL if they choose, and they can watch your videos. But nobody is being pushed in any direction. There's zero moderation taking place. Zero. If they do moderate, it means they can be sued for things. So that brings me back to the Supreme Court and why I want you to sign up for my email list. The Supreme Court just picked up a Section 230 case. They just decided that they wanted to hear the opening arguments and all that stuff. So I don't know why the Supreme Court would pick this case up if not to decide in Trump's favor. Like, I don't even know if Trump wants this anymore because he has Truth Social. It would make a huge mess out of Truth Social, a huge mess. But why would the Supreme Court pick this case up in the first place? It's bizarre. It's disturbing. I just don't know. If you're wondering, let me just tell you now, you subscribe to my email list at telltaleatheist.com slash subscribe. Telltaleatheist.com slash subscribe. I'll put a link to it in the description and the pinned comment of this video. I promise I will not sell your data. I promise nobody except for me will ever see the email list under any circumstances. I just want to have a connection to you guys in case YouTube is destroyed, in case Twitter and Twitch and everything else goes under because the Supreme Court makes the wrong decision here. I want to be able to communicate with you in a worst case scenario. Or hell, if I write a book and I want to sell a book and give you guys discounts to my store or my book or whatever other thing, I want to be able to communicate with you guys. Now, when you sign up, you have to go to your email and hit verify before it's actually added to the list. Okay, I will never send you spammy emails. I won't send you like a billion a day. I'm limited to like three per week anyways with the current plan that I have. And if you do sign up, I will give you full, uncensored, complete, ad-free videos from my Fireside Chat channel and my unfiltered channel at the very least. Maybe more. We'll see if I can do something more. That's something that patrons are going to be getting soon. That's somewhere else you could sign up if you wanted. But you don't have to pay for this. This is just, you know, sign up for your, you know, sign up with my email list. That's all you have to do. If you're on a Google device, be aware that I don't have SSL set up right now on my website. I'll set it up tomorrow, but you're not risking anything by not using SSL. You're not sending sensitive information and it's actually my website on the other end, so you don't have to worry about anything. And yeah, I appreciate it if you do decide to sign up. Uh, that would be really cool. I'm really worried about what the Supreme Court is going to decide, but there is something to look forward to here. I've been looking through right-wing websites for what they think of Section 230, like what their reaction has been to the possibility that the Supreme Court might erase it. And by and large, all of the right-wing websites that I've come across, except for the exception of one or two, have been really opposed to the Supreme Court removing Section 230. That means this isn't a culture war issue to the degree that, say, Roe v. Wade was. There are billions of dollars and thousands of people and organizations behind getting Roe v. Wade removed. And there have been for decades, right? That's not the case with Section 230 at all. There is no culture war behind Section 230. Not really. So uh, the Federalist is a right-wing website. Um, they are actually positive about removing Section 230, I've noticed. But Breitbart is Steve Bannon's website, I think. Uh, he was really negative about removing Section 230. He absolutely does not want Section 230 removed. That's a good thing. The fact that right-wing websites are negative about removing Section 230 is a point in our favor. I just don't know why they'd pick this up. I don't know why they picked this case up at all. And it's got me really concerned. 
So please sign up with my email list, okay? Thanks for signing up. Remember, you have to verify your email address before you're added to the list. I will never, ever sell your data. I will literally stand in front of a train. I will stab a man in the chest while looking directly in his eyes before I sell your data or do anything with it other than just email you. That's it, okay? I promise I won't do anything shady with your data. And also, all, all that's required is your email address. I don't even need your name if you don't want, if you're not comfortable, you know, entering it or something. Also, it will never be hacked because it's on a professional service, MailChimp. It's not like I'm hosting it myself or anything. So anyway, just hope for the best with this Section 230 stuff. It's got me a little worried.